Now, nice. speaking of contradictions, let's figure out what a contradiction actually is. So now I can finally get around to reading this slide. Okay. Uh, this is what Aristotle says about contradictions, that the same thing should at the same time both be and not be for the same person and in the same respect is impossible. So you got to ask three questions when considering a potential contradiction. Is it the same thing? Is it the same time period? And is it the, um, the same sense? Is the language employed in the same sense? Because there's plenty of opportunities where it could be one or two of those, but not the third, and then it's not a contradiction. So like you could say, Robert is poor as one sentence, and then Robert is rich as another sentence. Oh, <laughs> alhamdulillah, there's a, <laughs> there's right. a contradiction, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but it could just be Robert was poor at one point and Robert is now rich. There are two different time periods or right. there's two different Roberts. Right. Um, or Robert is poor in uh, material wealth, but he's rich in spiritual things, you know, that they're, they're right. not in the same sense. So you could have the those sentences coexist, but not be contradictory. So you have to look at context. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. um, or you could have three people or you could it could appear like it's three different people, but they have three different names. They're known by three different names. Yeah. Yeah. Like Peter, you know, <clears throat> Peter, Simon, Cephas, Cephas. Yeah, true. And some of those we'll get to in future live streams. That does happen. Uh, let's see. This question that must be asked when attempting to harmonize two or more verses or passages is this. Does this harmonization make sense given the entirety of the surrounding context? And that includes, but is not necessarily limited to, literary context, so nearby verses and chapters and paragraphs and whatnot, canonical context, meaning you look at the Bible as a whole, uh, not isolated books, and then historical context is the setting and the environment of the authors, and then you there you can include extra biblical sources and history and all kinds of stuff like that. So um yeah all those together when you have those uh criteria in there it really cuts down the field of what is alleged contradictions mm -hmm. and remember this this is the most important thing you only need to show the possibility of harmonization between two passages that appear to conflict in order to negate the force of an alleged contradiction so harmonization you're going to find uh, disagreement between scholars on this. Some people will try to find like the most, they'll try to harmonize every uh, alleged contradiction and provide an exact answer for it, um, like a literal answer. Mm. And then you'll find some who are more, I don't want to say liberal with their thinking, but just more um, free thinking on this kind of stuff where they're more willing to say like, oh yeah, the the version of the Bible that we have now is there's a copyist error there or something like that. So um, I know that just recently, Mike Lacona came out with a book called Jesus Contradicted, where hmm. he talks specifically about contradictions in the Bible, or sorry, in the gospel narratives. And I'm sure that there's some good stuff in there that I probably have not considered, um, but I just wanted to get on this because I want to share this with people and not all of these have to do with the gospels. These hmm. are across the whole Bible. So um, there's scholars like him. And then he said that Norman Geisler and Thomas Howe back in the day, they had a book called When Critics Ask, but I think it got um, updated to the big book of Bible difficulties or something like that, mm -hmm. where they go through a whole bunch of contradictions and they're more conservative on it, meaning they're trying to find perfect answers for all of these things. Mike is a little bit more, um, What's the word? He's just a little bit more loose with it, I guess, where he's he's not looking for a perfect answer for every single one, and he's okay with a little bit of ambiguity. Mm -hmm. And I got to be honest, I'm okay with a little bit of ambiguity too on some of these. And I'm not, on a lot of the contradictions, I'm not really beholden to one answer over the other. I think on several of these, you could have either of the options be the actual answer, and it'd be fine. Right. So if there's something you think about or somebody in the comments, if you think about something while we're going through these and you think that I'm wrong about this or there's a better answer or something, then let me know and I'll research it. And if I think it's better, then I will change what I put on there. 